It's Create Day, my friends. Today I am giving this happy little fellow a much needed makeover for my haunted house this year. Even though this style of decorating or creating may not be your thing, there will be tips and techniques I use that could be useful for a different type of project. Let's get started. I ordered this from Oriental Trading Company and the one I ordered wasn't supposed to have the light up eyes like this one does. So I don't need that. I go ahead and remove that um, feature from this prop. I'm just kind of giving you an overview of how he looks. And now he's going to go out to the garage and get his transformation started. The first thing I did was tie his hands and feet together and put him in an arched position. And this is a giant roll of um, palette wrap that I have. It's just like saran wrap. And I do a lot of props like this, so I it's worth it for me to have invested in the large roll. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this around that body section or the, the rib cage section several times. I'm going to be working separately on different parts of this uh, skeleton. And then I'm going to start wrapping around that shoulder. And I will do... Um, you know, a couple layers around all these joints and on his arms. I go around um, every part, the neck, the head, the spine, the pelvic area, the legs, the feet, the hands. The hands and feet were the hardest because of all the little toes and fingers. But I am going to just wrap this around and then I will be getting my heat gun and melting it down. Here I am with the heat gun. I am melting that plastic down in there and creating some holes in different areas. I still want that rib cage to show pretty well. And I just want to make sure that um, all these joints are covered tightly. I'm hoping that he won't move out of position. For the most part, he does stay in position, um, but he is still movable. So I guess it's kind of the best of both worlds. I can... Um, move him out of position if I need to to get him situated where I want him to hang but then I can put him back into the position I want and secure him. So I'm just going to go ahead and just continue melting down wrapping and melting down the saran wrap in on all the different areas until he's completely covered. I'm using Loctite foam for this next step. You can also use great stuff. I want to fill in some of that uh, cavity where his intestines and everything would be. Not completely, I just want to add enough to look like there's some guts and stuff in there. He's going to be quite abused by the time we're done with him. Now I'm using this quite sparingly actually. You it does expand like great stuff does so you want to be really careful that you don't just get this big bulging mess I'm going to be applying this all over on the outside as well as that inside area but I'm just putting a little bit on there and smushing it with my hands you don't want to get too much and this ends up giving him just this nice kind of crispy texture like he's been burned and that's a look you can go for just the burn look, but I'm choosing kind of half burned and half still alive look for this one. So that's all I'm doing here is just adding it all over in different areas, kind of just sparingly smushing it around with my fingers.
and here's how he looks so far. For the next step, I'm using shop towels that I have torn into pieces so that all the edges are torn and there aren't straight edges. This ended up being a little bit thicker than I liked, um, so in the future I would probably go with regular paper towels. But I wanted to give this a try, and I'm using my latex that I got from Amazon. I can leave the link below if you are interested in it. And then some water because it's hot and I was thirsty. I'm saturating these in the latex, just rubbing it around on my hands. You definitely want to work in a well-ventilated area. This stuff has some really strong fumes. And um, I've seen people use this without gloves. But to me, if something that smells that bad, I'm, I'm going to glove up. And I didn't want that because it gets really sticky when it starts to dry. So I did not want that mess all over my hands. So I get them pretty saturated and just press them down into just random areas. I really didn't have a plan. I just wanted to have some of this look more fleshy and but yet still leave some of the bone exposed. So I just kind of put them wherever I saw fit to do so. And now here he is with that step completed. It's time for some dental work. So I've got my little Dremel. This is the only cutting tip that I have for this. Um, I wanted to use more of a, like a circular blade type. I can't think of what it's called to get in between those teeth, but this one worked pretty well. I'm shaving off a lot of that uh, latex that got onto the teeth when I was putting all this on here. I kind of want to clean all that up. I want to have more definition in between the teeth so they look a little more realistic. A lot of people when they do a skeleton corpse they will actually add artificial teeth to them. This is going to be for a dark haunt. Nobody's going to notice that kind of detail so I did not want to go to that trouble. That's why I'm going to use the existing teeth he has just get them cleaned up and a little more defined and then paint them. It's time for our first coat of paint. I'm using flat black. I am still going to be adding some more latex with cotton, but I wanted to get a couple coats of paint on here to see what areas stand out to me that they need a little more attention with a little more detail. Now I'm adding Colonial Red. It's a satin and it doesn't matter to me what the sheen is on any of these. Um, so I just used what I had, what I could find, um, that it, like the sheen of it just didn't matter to me. So I'm going to go ahead and just spray this into all those little holes trying to get some bloody look down in there. And then I will dust this over the rest of him so that um, it'll help, help him look more burned. And then I can have a better idea of how much extra um, detail he needs.
Look at that, what a difference already. So now our paint is dry and I'm going to add my liquid latex with cotton. I've got some jumbo size cotton balls that I unroll and then I can take a portion of that, drench it in that latex and then spread that out, kind of tear it apart and spread it out onto the body. It just gives a more realistic look of, you know, tendons or I don't know, whatever whatever's left after he's been beaten and bloodied and burned. It just adds to the realism for me. Now when I got to the head, I wanted to use this also to help build up like that one brow. I'm going to pretend the other brow got completely burned off. And then I want to add a little bit on the nose as well. I don't want just this flat face. I, I want to make it look like it really got distorted in all of this. And then this works really well also just smushing it down on the face to make like little tendons like you know from the jaw up to the cheek you can just play around with it and put it wherever you want it whatever area you might want to build up if you want to build up around the gum lines it's great for that because it's it's a smaller piece that you're working with rather than like a shop towel so now that that's all dry I'm get going back in with that flat black paint and covering up my newly added latex and cotton I'm going to do the same thing with that Colonial Red. And now I can start dusting this with some other colors. I'm going to be using several colors on this just to get the, the layers and variation that I want. This is Marigold and I'm, I'm it looks like I'm getting a lot of coverage but I'm not spraying up really close. I'm staying back pretty far to get more of a dusting and now we're going in with espresso. I'm going to do the same thing and that kind of helps tone down that yellow a little bit. Now I'm dusting a color called granite. This is a gray color. I want to make sure I don't overdo this one but I do want to add a color that would be associated with being burned as in like, you know, charcoal. <laughs> so this next step I did not end up doing over the entire body. I'm taking my latex and I'm going to dab it on there and then dip, just take my cotton ball and kind of pounce it into the latex so that it picks up little fine hairs of the cotton ball. But for this prop, um, uh, it's kind of hard to explain. This, it, this, the effect of this is so subtle that unless you saw it in good lighting, you, you wouldn't really notice it. And I, so for me, I decided it wasn't worth my time. This is I'm trying to show you the effect it gives. It's really cool, but for me and my haunt, I just felt like it wasn't going to be worth my time and effort to do that over the entire body. So I did some on the head and some on the torso and I liked it, but I was like, you know, I just don't think it's going to show up because I'm not, um, you know, I'm not done with my final effects of paint and stuff. So I just felt like it would uh, be lost. So I went ahead and stopped that and I'm moving on to painting my teeth. I'm going in here with a gray color to start with. Next I'm using honey mustard, but I'm going to go ahead and wipe a lot of this off on my paper towel before I apply it. I don't want to cover the entire tooth. 
I just want to get a little bit of it brushed on there to add to the coloring so that I will get the end result that I want. I'm also dabbing it off with my paper towel just to make sure I don't get too much on there. Next is dark brown. I'm going to do the same thing. I have this watered down a little bit and I'm going to brush that on concentrating on getting it kind of in between the teeth as well and I will be dabbing off the excess with my paper towel just like I did with the yellow. Look at those twofers. Nice. So now it's time for some Fright Props blood. I absolutely love this stuff. It is very realistic looking. It dries shiny and just looks like coagulated blood. I'm using a chip brush for this. And I'm just going to dab this on everywhere that I see fit. I end up actually putting a lot inside the eye sockets after I get the eyeballs glued in. And, you know, it's just wherever you think the blood would be, where it would run. I, like I put it a pretty big glob onto the back of his head and let it run down. I'm making sure I fill in that mouth area. And um, then I go ahead and just apply it over the rest of the body. Let's see there, I'm even going to pour that in there. Like, let's get lots of blood going. This stuff is really fun to work with. Now on the torso, I want to make sure that I get it inside those holes that are still exposed there so that it looks like it's coming from the inside out. Here's how he's looking so far. It's time to work on the eyeballs, so I've got some gray craft paint. I'm going to water this down and brush it over these little plastic eyeballs that I got from Amazon. I will leave the link below. So what I'm trying to achieve here is a haze. So I brush that on water down and then I take a baby wipe and I'm just dabbing over the pupil so that that still kind of shows through. I want his eyes to look like they are hazing over because he's like melting. And um, I think I kind of achieved the look. It's not perfect, but you know, I did the best I could and I think they turned out pretty good. So now I'm gonna mix in some honey mustard and some brown. And I'm gonna go ahead and water that down a little bit and add it to the eyeballs, um, like putting it on the top, or not on the top, but right around the iris, the edge, and then spritz it with water and let it run down. I don't want a bright yellow color, I just want a hint of that. So I just brush this on, spritz it with water, and then set it aside and come back and do more if I need it. I wanted to hurry the process up so I've got my little heat tool and now we can add some Fright Props slime. 
I thought this would help with making them look kind of glazed over and imploding, I guess. <laughs> so I watered this down and I'm brushing that right over the very top of that eyeball and letting it run down the sides. And here's how they look. I'm hot gluing these into place. I'm putting a very generous amount of hot glue in there so that they will stick because the, you know, the underside of these is hollow. So I'm going to make sure there's lots of glue in there, get them in place, and then I'm going to go around the eyeball with some more hot glue to build it up and make it look like there's just like a lot of goo in his eye. And then I can go over that with the Fright Props blood, kind of fill in that eye socket so it looks like he's literally going to be like, you know, on the verge of bleeding out of his eyeballs. I know this seems like really gross to a lot of people. I have a lot of fun with this kind of stuff because you really can't screw it up. You can just be super creative, do whatever you want, and it's like there's no right and wrong. Like whatever your vision is, you are just free to bring that to life. And to me, it's like I don't see it as gross. I think it's I I, I mean I think it's really cool because he is gross. Like, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I love making creepy things. It's so fun. The hot glue is dry, so I'm taking that Fright Props blood. I'm starting off by adding back to that gum line that I had not done earlier. It really needed it. And then I will add this around those eyeballs over that hot glue. Look at how good that looks. Oh my gosh, it's all shiny and coagulated. Oh, it's perfect. I needed to do some more touch-ups on his head. I had some spots that I weren't, wasn't happy with. So that's just what I'm doing here to make sure I have enough blood over his skulls because you know head wounds, how they bleed. So we gotta be realistic. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish touching up this face and then I think we're done with this guy. I will add my playlist for my Halloween projects like this from last year at the end of the video. If you want to just click on that on the end card, um, you can go and see all those videos from last year. But this little guy is done. I think he turned out great. I mean, I know he's kind of gross, but I think he's great. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that there was something here that you found useful and I would appreciate it if you like my content, you would subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, but most importantly, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.